Hello everyone and welcome. I have teamed up with Dodge for the Dodge Horsepower Challenge where they are giving away five Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eyes over five weeks and it is week three. To enter, go to dodgehorsepowerchallenge.com. Now this week's question is, how much horsepower would a red eye need in order to travel one mile in less time than it takes a red eye to fall one mile from the sky? So there's a lot of math here to do, but it's pretty straightforward if you just follow through each of these steps. So we have our car falling from one mile up, and then we have our car one mile away, and this one wants to be able to pass this distance faster uh, than this one falling from the sky will reach that one mile drop distance and hit the ground. And so the first thing we need to do is figure out what will this car's terminal velocity be. So we have our equation for terminal velocity and Dodge provided us with all of the variables. The only one you have to do a little bit of math on is the area. So you multiply the length by the width and then you're gonna divide that by 144 to get that area into feet squared. Now, once we have our terminal velocity, we can figure out how much time does it take the car to reach that terminal velocity with the assumption that we don't have to worry about aerodynamic drag until it reaches that terminal velocity. That makes the math quite a bit easier here. So that time one is just our terminal velocity divided by acceleration, which is provided. Now with that time, we can figure out how far that car then travels. So that will be our first distance. And so we have one mile total. We can subtract from that our distance one, and that will give us the remaining distance that car has to travel. Now we know it's gonna fall that remaining distance at its terminal velocity, so we can do some quick math here and take the remaining distance, divide it by its terminal velocity, and that will give us the time it takes to fall that remaining distance. So we've calculated how much time it took to reach terminal velocity, we've calculated how much time it will spend traveling once it reaches terminal velocity, and from that, we know how much total time it takes that car to fall. So that's gonna give us our target for acceleration for our car on the ground. So it's average acceleration that it needs in order to travel that distance and the amount of time it took for that car to fall is going to be two multiplied by the distance, one mile, 5,280 feet, divided by our two times added together, squared. And so with that average acceleration, we can figure out our average power. So we're not figuring out peak power for this equation, uh, we're figuring out average power needed for the car. And the good news is we get to ignore a lot of things. We get to ignore driveline inefficiencies, we get to ignore aerodynamic drag, and we get to ignore rolling resistance. So that makes the math pretty easy. Power is equal to force times velocity. We have the equation for force here, including the average acceleration, which we just calculated, multiplying that by the velocity, the distance we're traveling, divided by the time it takes, and then we take all of that and divide it by 550 to get in units of horsepower, and then we have our answer, which we can submit to dodgehorsepowerchallenge.com. Good luck.